So let's look at elliptic curves in cryptography. So elliptic curves are used fairly extensively now in, uh, in identifying entities. Uh, they're used also in key exchange. So typical places are in blockchain, Bitcoin, the Tor network, and smart cards, and, and, and so on. So their impact is, is increasing. So I'm just going to outline that there isn't one elliptic curve that we use. There are, there are many different standards. Okay, so the way it works is around uh, a hard problem, which is if we have a point G on an elliptic curve and we uh, project a gradient up into a point, then it's quite it's difficult to actually determine what that gradient is, even though we have that point and the value of G. So G becomes our generator value, and P is a point at which our uh, at which if we project a gradient of a private key, then that will be the point at which it touches the the elliptic curve. So a private key is typically a 256-bit random number, and the public key is an XY value on the elliptic curve. We can release the public key, we can release the G value, but we shouldn't release the, the private key. And so this is what a key uh, actually looks like. So we'll just have a quick look to see uh, what an elliptic curve looks like. So this is an example here. So the format that we have is y squared is equal to x cubed plus plus uh, b x plus a x plus b. So in this case the a value is 0 and the b value is 7. So we have no x value in there. So it's y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7. That's a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 7. This is called the SIPSC 256k curve. And this is another common curve. It's used in the Tor network, curve 25519. The a value is this value here, and the b value is this value. Each of them produces uh, a different looking uh, elliptic curve. Okay, so we have our A, A value and we have our B value. We also have a P value in which all of the operations are mod P. So P will be as a prime number and it will be the maximum value that we can actually generate so our private key, a 256-bit random number, our public key is the XY value, that's 512 bits, and it's an XY point. We define the type that we're using, and this is the prime number we're using in this case. So this is the mod P that we're going to be using. In this case, A is 0, so that's a 0, and B is 7. So this is an elliptic curve y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7 mod p. Our generator value is known, and it's this value here. And we also have an order uh, value. Okay, so these become our elliptic curve uh, parameters. This is a private key, but then when we export a public key, we must export the public key part plus all the other parts for the other side to be able to understand what our key actually is. Okay, so here, here's an example here. So I'm, I'll generate a key. Okay, so there is my private key. There's my public key. Prime number, A value, B value, and so on. So I'll just show you that generation. So we typically use open SSL as our 
method of uh, generating these keys. Okay, so this is going to create my uh, key pair. This is, this is going to create my random private key. From the random private key, we generate the public key. Okay, so all this is doing is, is creating my private key as a random number. So just let me check that we have the right parameters there. Okay, so we're going to use the curve that I showed you. The A is 0 and the B is 7. I'm going to generate the key and that's fine. Okay, so we'll just have a look to see what that looks like. Okay, so we have a privileged to PM that we've created. Okay, so all that's all that's done is to be able to create our private key. So we keep that private key secret. Now what we'll do is that we'll uh, read in that private key. And we can generate our public key from that. Oops. Okay, so that's generated our public key there based on the private key that we have. Okay, so the way to interpret it, this is uh, just a, a normal scalar value. And then we have our elliptic, our public key, which is an XY value. Uh, the 0, 4 is, uh, is a way to define uh, the, the, the format that we're actually using, but the x y value is in there, and that should be a 512-bit volume. Okay, so if we now want to have a look to see what our parameters are, we can see here it's it's taken because of the curve that we're using. There's the A value, the B value, the generator order, and the prime number uh, there. Okay, so that's what the keys actually look like. So there are many different uh, elliptic curves that we can actually use. So. Let's see here. Okay, so these are just some of them. So NIST defined standards uh, for elliptic curve values. So we take a P192. Then we can see the A value is that, and the B value is this. There's the generator value, the prime number, and this is generating a secret key, a shared key here. Okay, so these are some of the uh, the standard curves that we can have. There's a prime number for uh, the the curve that we've just looked at. There's the base point G. There's the A and the B value there, and so on. So there's the one nine two that we used minus three. There's the B value. We typically show it as a hex value or as a as an integer. There's the prime number that we're using. The generator and so on. Okay, so when we're using our, our commands, then we can actually define the name of the curve, which will go in here. Uh, obviously, it does, doesn't know that name for the curve. And these are the, the other ones here. So I one that's often used is the 255519. So there's the value that I showed before. There's the G value. So you can see the X value is a 9, and then that's the other point on the elliptic curve. 
and there's the the, uh, the prime number here which is this value here 2 to the power of 255 minus 19 is the prime number that's used for elliptic curve 2511 okay so if you want to see how it actually works here's an example of uh, of key exchange. So uh, Alice and Bob use the shared value of G. Alice creates her private key DA and Bob creates his private key DB. They create a public key, that's that point on the elliptic curve QA and QB. They exchange the values. They then Alice then multiplies the value she gets from B from Bob, public key, to create the share. Same on the other side. Bob takes the, uh, his private key, multiplies the value that he got from uh, Alice. We've got to use mod p all the time in this, okay? So those operations are constrained by the prime number. And then in the end, they should end up with the same shared private key. Uh, so this is an example of the code that we, that we can use here. If you're interested, this is how we do a scale and multiply. We have a little Python function in here to do this multiplication of the scalar times a point. Okay, so this is the scalar and this is the point. And we find the, the point on the, uh, the elliptic curve. And that becomes our shared secret. Okay, so there's G, uh, there's Alice's secret key. There's a public key, X, Y value. There's Bob's secret key. And there's Bob's public value in X and a Y. Then when they calculate, they'll calculate a point on the, uh, they will calculate a point which is the secret key of Alice times the secret key of Bob's times G to give us that point. We then typically just use the X value as our shared value, so we end up just with a value such as this. And we can use something like SHA256 to generate a key size as we require. Okay, so that's been an introduction to uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman uh, methods, especially looking at the different curves that we can have.